Good early evening, everybody. Super Jack Show One here. Now, if you saw my uh, video I did on Friday, on uh, yeah, it was uploaded last night, but it was filmed on Friday when I did the Avengers Endgame reaction, audience reaction video. I showed I have an Avengers Infinity War poster, poster hung in my room on the wall, and I said that I ordered an Avengers Endgame poster. That would be coming in the mail in a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Well, something came in the mail today. That's right. An Avengers Endgame poster. Now, there's some stuff right here because uh, since it just came in a package, I'm trying to flatten it. But that'll be getting hung up in my room. And I got this for free off of Disney Movie Rewards. So I decided, why not? Why not have it? So, anyway. Decided to include that in the video because uh, this review was actually, that uh, poster is actually related to this video because I'm going to be doing my first ever time doing a review of a, of a recent movie that I would see in theaters. I'm doing a review of Avengers Endgame. As you know, I did see it, as you saw from that audience reaction. I actually did, I saw it on Friday, and I actually did see it again. I actually saw it yesterday at the Entertainment Center's Movie Theater in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. And actually, I'm going to probably go see it a couple more times. But anyway, uh, Avengers Endgame is probably, in my opinion, probably the best MCU movie to date. Combination and I know it's kind of shocking to think about though that last year over a year and a half ago I bought a bunch of MCU blu-rays and I had never I had bur barely seen any of them I, I don't know why I just didn't get into them. My family is just not into superhero movies So they never really showed me them. I, I so apologize. I kind of regret that. I wish I could go back in time No pun intended to um, So that way the younger me could have seen all of them anyway So yeah Avengers Endgame was an amazing movie. There were some pros and some cons only very few cons. I'm going to talk about the pros first. I just want to say the climatic battle with Thanos when everybody comes back to life. That is probably, to me, the greatest scene in any MCU movie. Surpassing the infamous 360 shot in the first Avengers movie. Just all one big battle. Every single character from every single MCU movie. All, every character from all of the uh, previous 21 MCU movies all together in one big scene. Incredible. Absolutely 150% incredible. How they pulled that off is beyond me. The time travel sequences were awesome. I love how they go back to the events of the first Avengers, they go back to the events of Thor the Dark World, and back to the events of the first Guardians of the Galaxy. That Those were all cool. It was nice seeing Hawkeye back, since we hadn't seen him since Civil War. Him going under the identity Ronin. And by the way, I forgot to mention that this vi this video has spoilers. I'm sorry, you already just heard a, just a couple things with that minor like plot points, but I'm just going to say this video has spoilers. So if you've already seen this far, stop watching the video. And Yeah, and So yeah, Hawkeye is back with the Ronin identity. Seeing his family get dusted. I I a lot of us had that feeling that that's why he was like that is that Everybody in his family except him got killed by the snap. And I love all the scenes with uh, with Thor when he's revealed to be fat and drunk. That was that was hilarious. And I love I love they brought Valkyrie back, Valkyrie from uh, Thor Ragnarok. I'm I'm glad they brought her back because I liked her character in Ragnarok. I actually thought her character was actually a lot more interesting than uh, Jane Foster. And. Thanos, I'm going to be honest here, I think Thanos is probably the best MCU villain to date. And I like how they kind of changed it, how, since this is the 2014 version of him, in Infinity War, they made him a kind of like, almost like a sympathetic villain, like, you understand his goal in life, and you understand why he's doing it, but here, they kind of change it to, like, he's now like the big baddie, like, they've all been waiting to fight for, he's like this evil villain now, and he's no longer sympathetic, where we're, we don't, we now think that he's crazy. I'm sure we thought he was crazy in Infinity War, but we understand, like, you know, why he was doing it. And I think Captain Marvel was portrayed a lot better here than she was in her own movie. 
And that's one of the things that actually surprised me. I'm actually surprised by how little screen time uh, Captain Marvel had. I mean, yeah, she wasn't in the first couple of trailer. She wasn't in the teaser trailer or the Super Bowl ad. And she technically didn't make an appearance in the full official trailer until the very end. But I thought they were doing that for the teaser in the Super Bowl ad. I thought they were. Just, I thought she wasn't appear because I thought they were just waiting until Captain Marvel came out. And then after that, Captain Marvel came out, she would appear in a lot more trailer spots, which she did. She appeared in a lot of this TV ads, the, the several TV ads, and then they she appeared in the later trailers and everything. It made it seem like she was going to have a big role, but then I think in the movie she only has like seven or eight, seven or eight minutes of screen time, and then that's it. And the Hulk with um, Bruce Banner and the Hulk combined together, that was that was pure creativity. So that way we could have the Hulk and Bruce Banner together in the movie. And uh, let's see, what else did I like about the movie? It's just the movie was pure perfection. Like the the Russo's direction was just incredible. It's just amazing how they pulled all this off. And three the movie was three hours long, but it did not feel even that long. Clearly, the movie broke. Literally, that, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of box office records. It made a billion dollars in one weekend. Imagine that, a billion dollars. It took all of Star Wars The Force Awakens records and just threw them right out the window. And then topped more of Avengers Infinity Wars records. Yeah, just incredible how many record, how many box office records it smashed. And I'm very... And uh, I'm trying to think of some pros here before we go on to the cons. Uh, like I said, the climatic battle. And one of my pros, this is kind of a pro and a con, Iron Man dying. It's a con because it's kind of sad now that we'll have to see the MCU move on with Tony Stark. I know there are rumors going around that he could possibly come back, but I don't think he's going to come back. I mean, I want him to come back, but I feel like... The way he sacrificed himself, which was made at com, was just a perfect way for his conclusion to end in the MCU. It was for him to sacrifice himself. And his very last words, I am Iron Man. Or he says it like, I am Iron Man. And you saw in the audience reactions that the entire theater cheered when he said that. And that was nice. And then for... I like how Captain America got a lot more screen time in this movie than he did in Infinity War. And I'm glad they gave him back his shield and everything. He was just perfect. One thing I do also love how actually is when uh, Captain America and uh, Iron when uh, Steve and Tony, they travel back to the 1970s and they uh, to get the Tesseract and Tony uh, sees his dad, Howard Stark. That was awesome. They He says something like, do I know you? You look very familiar. And Ant-Man, Ant-Man cracked me up. He was just perfect. I, his role in Hawkeye, last year when Infinity War came out, a lot of people were disappointed that Ant-Man and Hawkeye weren't in Infinity War. And the Russo said they had a special story cooked up for them that required them to be absent in Infinity War. And now I understand why. Like, Ant-Man needed to be trapped in the quantum realm to know how how we, uh, to, to realize about the time travel they could use. Also, the way Ant-Man got out of the quantum realm with a rat, just accidentally pressing the button. Now I joke about it, I realize a rat pretty much saved the entire universe. Um, I like how it was just a simple, coincidental way of how Scott got out of the quantum realm. A lot of people with theory, theory maybe Captain Marvel would find and save him, and then, or maybe Lewis, uh, would find him and then let him out or something, or something like, you know, just... Ex Machia that would get him out. Something, some an Ex Machia would show up and uh, get him out. But no, they just had it where his the uh, quantum realm was like in the storage area, and then a rat uh, or mouse walked by and stepped on the button to turn it on, and then he got he got out of the quantum realm. That was just a simple way of how he got out. Now we're gonna go to the cons. There are very few cons. I think one of the biggest prom, uh, cons in the movie was there was. There was quite a bit of confusion with time travel. They were they were saying how it's not like Back to the Future, where if you change the past, it ultimately changes the future. There was a little bit of t confusion with that. Oh, by the way, 
for the con for the uh, pros, by the way, um, Iron Man's funeral was very emotional. I love that little detail they put where they saw the teenage boy Harvey, the kid from Iron Man Three. That was, I remember actually that um, I re before Endgame came out, there were rumors going around that the kid was going to appear in Endgame, but and I thought what role he would possibly play. Now we know it was just a brief small role. That 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 was actually good. I mean, for the cons, yeah. The cons, there was some confusion with time travel, how it said how it, it's not like Back to the Future where if you change the past, it ultimately changes the future. There's some confusion about that because how, like, they steal the Tesseract and Loki from 2012 steals the Tesseract and disappears. And then they steal the Tesseract from the 70s and ultimately... they're it leads to the events of the first Avengers then just not happening or something like that. There was a little bit. And then the end when Steve goes back in time to have that dance with Peggy and he comes back an old man. I, I, there's really a lot of confusion of how the time travel works. The thing is when you do movies is that there's always a confusion of how time travel works. You don't know, like if time travel actually existed, which I wish it did, it'd be very confusing to find out how it all works. And one thing I didn't like, uh, one thing I, I wasn't too crazy about was how there was a five-year gap. I feel like five years was a little bit too long. I, I would have said maybe like three years, like maybe it should have been like three years. That, that would have been okay. I feel like that would have been okay. I felt like five years was just a little too much. And another con is that I feel like the beginning when they, uh, when uh, War Machine, uh, Rocket, Nebula... Um, Steve, Bruce, Black Widow, and Captain Marvel, when they all go to Thanos' planet, and just, and Thor, by the way, they all go to, uh, Thanos' planet, and then they, uh, his farm, and then they kill Thanos by chopping off his head. I feel like it was just way too easy they did that. I, I, I get it, though, like, you know, how Thanos would appear later in the movie, because I knew, like, as soon as he chopped his head off, we were like, yeah, there's still another three hours of what's gonna go on. I just felt like they just got rid of it, that Thanos just too quickly. I feel like they should have had like a, a very brief battle between him first before they subdued him and then killed him. I feel like that should have been better. I feel like they should have done that just as a way to do that. And I love how Th Thor was fat and drunk and there everything, but I kind of wish by the time they got to the final battle, say when Thor got the hammer and everything, he became skinny again. I, I feel like that the fat Thor kind of just went a little too far and that they should have had him be skinny. And I'm also kind of disappointed. I mean, I'm okay with the long hair, but I kind of wish he kept the uh, the short hair from uh, Ragnarok and Infinity War. I, I, I actually like the short hair a lot better. I, th I think a lot of people like the short hair better. Um, uh, very few cons. I'm trying to think of one other con. Uh... Really, I can't really think of anything, any other cons because the movie was just pure affection. And another emotional scene was... Also, another uh, con actually was how there was no post credit scene. Uh, but B Black Widow's death, very shocking. I, I actually thought it was going to be Hawkeye when Hawkeye was very literally was like this close to jumping off and then Black Widow stopped him. And then... I was not expecting it to be Black Widow, because after all, we have the Black Widow movie coming out next year, which will have to be a prequel and everything. I was not expecting it to be Black Widow. And I love, actually, uh, going back to the pros, because I really don't have that many cons, is that their Pepper teamed up in the Iron Suit. That was genius. And I, I love the way how they brought out, like, you know, they showed everybody coming back. It's like, you know, when Steve is talking to... Um, Thanos, and then he hears on his headset, he hears Falcon on his uh, headset. It says, Steve, it's Sam, to your left. And then portals open, and it shows, like, Black Panther, Shiri, um, and uh, him show up, and then Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Like, the way they just, everybody just entered was just pure genius. And then Wong came, and everybody, and then, of course, Captain America saying, Avengers, assemble. That climax was, like, absolutely 100% flawless like and I love the little uh interaction between uh Captain Marvel and uh Spider-Man when he says hi I'm Peter Parker hey Peter Parker I think you have something for me and then hands her the gauntlet 
That was cool. But yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I think Avengers: Infinity War. It's also surpassed The Dark Knight to become my favorite superhero movie. It was just, although I do admit, Avengers: Infinity War. I, I do admit, Infinity War had a better story, but Endgame was a better movie. But yeah, my only complaints is that I feel like Thanos at the. Also, another con I have is actually how Captain Marvel saves Tony. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused about that. So does that mean the the post credit scene, the credit, the mid credit scene in Captain Marvel where they find the pager was that non canon or something? I, I don't know. But aside from that, I'm gonna say Avengers Endgame, amazing movie. It's currently my favorite movie of this year. I've already seen it twice in one weekend, and it could, and I actually might see it a couple more times depending if I have spare time. After all, you gotta make sure you have three hours of spare time. Um, but yeah, I give this movie actually a 20 out of 10. Just a great way to wrap up everything in the MCU, from the first era of the MCU. But we, another thing, uh, Khan was just from the marketing, the way they're saying like, you know, the way they were marketing it, they're making, they were making it seem like it was going to be the last MCU movie, even though we know that there are tons more in development. This is not even close to being the last. Uh... Yeah, but I'm I'm actually just really happy that uh, I was able to see it opening night, and I'm sorry the audience reactions weren't as exciting as I hoped they would be. But hey, this is like I said, it's Rhode Island. We don't really get a lot of big audience reactions. But yeah, I'm very 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 happy, glad that uh, they all pulled this off. And R.I.P. Spider Man and Blo no, Sp sorry, Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man. Excuse me. R.I.P. Iron Man and Black Widow, a.k.a. Tony Stark and Natasha Romanoff. Played by none other than Robert, Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson. And this is also, also another thing I'm kind of confused about. Reshoots happened in September, and they said uh, actress Catherine Langford, who played Hannah Baker on the, on the first two seasons of 13 Reasons Why, she said... She had been uh, cast in an undiscussed role or an unrevealed role, yet she, the actress didn't even appear in the movie. There's, there are a couple of possibilities first. One is that it was actually a rumor and that it was never, since Marvel never actually confirmed it. Two is that it was one of those blink and you'll miss it cameos. And three is that maybe her scenes were just cut from the finished movie and then maybe they'll appear on the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. I don't know, but like I said, Endgame, currently my favorite movie of this year, and I will definitely probably be seeing it a couple more times in theaters. If you've seen Endgame, let me know your thoughts and pros and cons in the comments below. Have a good day, y'all.